Hello everyone and welcome to the Grim Rail Depot Challenge Mode Gold Guide. I'm your host, Baby Jace, the Blood Death Knight in this group. This one, everyone is saying that this one is pretty easy, but we actually never really enjoyed this one. We felt this one was one of the medium difficulty dungeons simply because the train pull is very difficult. But uh, you're going to start this dungeon off by using Invis Pots or using Rogue AoE Stealth. Just You're going to stealth past all of this trash. And the only thing you're going to pull in this trash is the mob that we actually sapped there. The Overseer, I believe, is their name. We're going to pull them... Yeah, the Grim Rail Overseer. We're going to pull them with the boss. And we're just going to do both of them together. Um, the Overseer, all he really does is charge around. Now, this boss is pretty much the same as Heroic. The main uh, boss, Bork of the Brute, he does a stomp that will lock out spellcasters, so don't cast while he's doing that. The little goblin jumps around and shoots little patches on the ground. You need to move out of that. We found that once, uh, once he goes down off of the platform, you can just go ahead and lust. Or you can lust at the start of the fight, it doesn't matter. But once you do knock him off the platform, he takes a lot more damage. And that is when you're going to want to do all of your damage to Railmaster. So melee, the tank, everyone needs to be on him when he gets knocked off. Other than outside of that though, the melee are for the most part going to be on the giant orc brute. It's not worth chasing him around. You might as well just stack them together, stack the, the brute with the overseer and just cleave them down. But uh... Eventually the goblin will again go on top and he will take more damage once you knock him down. This fight's it is pretty much identical to heroic. And it's not too difficult. The goal for the fight is you're gonna wanna kill both of them around the same HP. If you're going to kill any of them first, you're gonna wanna kill Bork of the Brute first. Because if you kill the goblin, the brute will enrage and he does about he already does a lot of damage already, and he'll do 50% more damage, and you will probably die unless you have major cooldowns. And you don't want to use major cooldowns on this boss. You're going to want to use your major cooldowns for the next pull, because the next pull is pretty hard uh, for, for the tank to deal with. It's just a lot of damage. So once you've killed this boss, you're going to come across the Grimrail Bombardiers now. You don't have to do this, but what we do is we grab all the bombardiers and we bring them all up to the last one and just cleave all three of them down. Now, be aware that they do put a stacking blood or bleed uh, dot on you, and this does a lot of damage as well as a cleave. I actually ended up dying because of how much damage they were doing. It's quite a bit of damage. You also don't want to walk through the fire uh, circles on the ground. You need to just dodge them, as they do uh, way too much damage. But uh, once you get all of them to the top, you just want to cleave them down. Note, again, all three of them will put a bleed on you, as well as a stacking debuff that makes you take more damage from their bleed and from their cleave. So you're going to want to pop major cooldowns here. I popped Icebound, I popped Dancing Rune Weapon, I was using my Rune Taps, my Vamp Blood, Blood Shield, Death Pact, my Health Potions, I used everything on this, and I still died. So you need to use a lot of cooldowns if you pull them all together. If you just simply cannot handle all of them together, you're going to want to pull them separately, because the damage is just too much. Once you've killed them, you're going to want to immediately go into the uh, Train Cart. And you're going to pull the first pack you see. Note, the Gromkar Gunner. The Gunner, wherever you are facing them, they will use something called Shrapnel Blast. You're probably familiar with this from Heroic. But if you're not, this is a frontal cleave that he does. And it does massive amounts of damage. If you point this cleave at your party, you will kill someone. Someone's going to die. So you need to point that away from As soon as you pull him, you need to point it away. That is your first priority. Your healer just has to keep you topped up. You you just need to position it away. And once once you've killed them, you're going to go to the next pack. If you have something that can get rid of enrages, you don't need to focus the brute. The brute's not really a problem if you have something that can 
get rid of his enrages like Shiv, Trink Shot, Soothe. You, you just want to leave him alone. You want to cleave the other guys. And once you do kill the the other mods, you're just going to drag the big giant orc to the next pack and cleave him down with that pack as well. There's nothing really to watch out in, here, uh, in this pack. You, you just want to, I think, out of all the mobs, you're probably going to want to focus on the Gromkar Cinderseer as he puts fire patches on the ground, which are kind of annoying to deal with, as you see here. He put the fire patch on the ground, and I was in it for a little while. And he, he also buffs everyone else with, like, more fire damage, so just watch out for that. And just, you want to kill him first, and then you'll probably want to kill the Brute at that point. He just, the Brute's kind of annoying, he does a lot of damage. Alright, if you are a Death Knight, you're going to want an army here on this next pack because you're going to pull the first two packs together. And if you're not a Death Knight, I don't know if you want to pull these two together. If you do pull them together, you're going to need to use all of your major defensive cooldowns as this is probably the hardest pull of the entire instance as there is two shrapnel guys and you just need to keep positioning them away from everyone and it's really hard to do to see like when they're doing it and deal with like all of the mobs beating on you and deal with the giant orc dude. It's just a lot of damage to heal through so if you're a death knight you're going to want an army here as army is going to make this pull quite a bit easier. Uh, however note that there is another pack at the end of this train cart. You do not want to pull this pack with these mobs as they are two cinder seers and the flame circle they put on the ground is just way too much. Uh, to deal with so you definitely don't want to pull the last pack with anything else you just want to pull them separately make sure you, you mark one of the cinder series and you just focus it down you need to kill them as soon as you can they just do massive amounts of damage there's also a gunner here but the gunner is not the priority it is the cinder series as they just put too many fire patches on the ground to deal with. And the gunner you can just run away and position it away from your group. Since it's not really too much of a it's not too difficult. Once you've killed this pack, you're going to want to let your healer get some mana before you pull this uh, second boss. The second boss is the hardest boss in the instance, in my opinion. There's just so much going on, and at first, the first time you do it, you can feel a little overwhelmed by what is going on, but I promise once you once you figure out like what's going on, it, it's actually a very easy fight. Uh, once you get him to 50-ish percent, He's just going to go to the back and open up the sides. For And this is going to be the main fight. Uh, what you mainly need to do is focus on killing the adds and using the buffs they drop on the boss. There's three buffs. Grenades, you can kind of use them on other adds. Shrapnel, you want to save your shrapnel for the boss to kill him instantly when he comes out of his cannon. And uh, mortars. You're going to want to use mortars to jump into the cannon and bomb the boss just to kill him. We found the easiest way to do this boss was to have one melee or one range DPSing the boss full time right next to the boss. You want to be next to the boss because if you are next to the boss it will cause him to put his fire on his cannon all the time instead of the main area where you are fighting the adds. And this is going to make the fight drastically easier uh, to deal with but when you don't have to dodge uh, massive amounts of fire that makes the fight just a uh, way way easier but you're going to use your use your mortars on the cannon and just bomb use the grenades on like fresh packs that have uh, the elites in them another reason why you want one person DPS in the cannon is it makes it so if you, if you do 25% damage to the cannon it makes it so you only have to throw three mortars at him instead of four so you don't have to wait for an additional uh, pack to come along. It, it makes the fight go a lot faster. And whenever you do get the uh, fixate, you just want to stand where our warlock is standing right there, behind the pillar. 
once you stand there behind the pillar, you, you can't be hit. It does no damage to you, and you can just chain cast on whatever. As you see here, three hits, the boss is out. You just want to drag him in between the cannons and use the shrapnel on him. And the shrapnel will kill him pretty much instantly. So that that's going to be why you want to save it. After the second boss, sometimes you'll get a bug here where both sides light up on fire. You just wait for it to pass. And then you, you, you just pick a side. I, unfortunately, I picked the wrong side. And I chose the side with the fire. But I just AMS this in the Death Knight. For this pull, you're going to want to pull the Farseers without the Captain. You do not want to pull the Captain with this, as the Captain does a lot of AoE damage. Unfortunately, I snagged the Captain with that last grip, so we are going to have to deal with it. You definitely don't want to pull the Captain if you can help it. He does a lot of AoE damage. For the most part, you're going to want to focus on the Farseers, interrupting the Storm Shields that they do as this does a lot of a melee damage. If you have melee, the, the, the lightning will chain off of your melee, your tank. It could also chain off of your range, so you just need to be careful because it's, it's just a lot of damage that you have to deal with. But if, other than that, you just have to worry about healing through the storm shields and the, the captain. Again, the captain does massive amounts of AoE, so just try not to get him. Once you kill everything here, the, the boss will come down just like she does on Heroic. As far as I know, her mechanics are the same as Heroic, just does more damage. The main thing you have to watch out for as the tank is and melee is you're going to have to watch out for the Frost Trap. You don't want to get rooted because if you are rooted inside of her light, the Lightning Breath, it's going to cause a lot of damage. The best way I found to tank this fight is tank it on one uh, grid one grid where the lightning will go, and if lightning does go on that grid, you just sidestep to a part of the grid where it's not on. She only puts lightning on grids that have players in them. So if I'm in the middle grid, she will only put lightning in this middle grid. She won't put it on the left, and she won't put it on the right. So I have two places I can go. See? She puts it in the middle, I go straight to the right. And you just don't even have to deal with that. Another ability she does is she throws her spear. You just dodge it wherever she's facing, don't stand in it, as that that does knock you down, and it, it's just a pain in the pain in the ass to deal with. Again, she put the lightning breath where I was, I sidestepped it to the middle. I forgot to mention, you will want to lust on this fight, as this is the fight where your lust is going to come up. You don't want to lust on the second boss, it's a complete and total waste there. This is the fight where you will want to lust. As you can see here, the fight's not difficult at all. Now, sometimes she will randomly fill the entire room up with lightning. You just use defenses to not die. Hopefully you will have gotten a gold medal with that one. And it's not, it's not too hard, it's not too easy though. It, it's I feel like it's a medium difficulty challenge mode. But if if you if this guide helped you get gold, go ahead and subscribe. Go ahead and leave a comment if you want to leave a comment. If you have any tips, uh, I do add tips into the guides as annotations. So go ahead and leave a tip if you have a suggestion for me. And if you want to look at any of the other challenge modes, all eight of them are right there in front of you. So go ahead and click on those. And other than that, have a good day.